I'm Aubrey. I've been living on a small boat for about six years. I recently bought a pirate ship. And right now she's waiting for mass and rigging in Washington. So in order to earn a few bucks to pay for the project, we've taken on a boat flip. It's a 1996 37 Hunter. Thank you so much to our patrons for making these videos possible. That sounds like good news. Whoa. What you got? Woo! Oh. Right. Come on. What? No, you didn't. Oh, it's no. half undressed now. <laughs> now you can look under the skirt. Woo! We cruise into Green Turtle Key to weather out the storm. It's a nice little hurricane hole. Because of the storm prediction, we decided to grab a mooring ball. Usually, I like to anchor out. Ray, make sure that it's a good storm, even okay. though there's fucking nothing we can do. Okay. Fifty knots. Fifty knots. Okay, pull the life vest out.
coming. I cried a little. I didn't think I could swim in that. What's that? We're all right though, there's more. We got over 60 knots and uh, someone's anchor dragged over our mooring ball and pulled it loose and then we were free throughout the mooring field. Uh, Sir Olhat was a fucking badass at the helm and I went to the anchor and uh, cut the mooring lines loose and um, and uh, pulled the anchor back up, which I know I could do, which I can do. And then uh, we took it to shallows and uh, threw all of our chain and anchor out again. I did, and he, he helped like a badass. So uh, we're waiting for another part of the squall to come and uh, hopefully our anchor goes. So a little update. Um, Sorrel just pulled up the anchor. I uh, took us forward to a place where we hear there's better holding. We have a, another friend that just called us up and, and said we could move into this little cubby. So uh, Sorrel and I have decided to take the secondary anchor out and flake the road on the deck. So if we drag again, um, we can just drop that anchor out and hopefully she'll grab. I don't really trust the moorings now and we're getting another front in at midnight um, and it should last until 1 a.m. So uh, we're just getting ready. I've got the life vest now out. I, uh, I just wanna tell you guys, I had the, uh, the life vest and the lazarette on top ready to uh, grab. We're not sailing right now, we're on anchor. And this was supposed to blow 20 knots today, so we weren't expecting it. And uh, when we needed our life jackets the most, the uh, 50, 60 knots of wind was blowing too hard for us to get into the lazarettes. So I learned a valuable lesson that thankfully didn't uh, take my life, um, that those life vests need to be out and hanging on a wall and accessible if they're not on your body. So uh, Cyril and I are gonna put some hooks up behind me and, and hang those vests. So even though they were in the lazarette and on top with the wind blowing like that, we couldn't even open the lid. So that was eye-opening for me. My radio was charging in its cradle and was thrown and lost. I have a little backup, little ditch box here that I keep under the stairs. And that's got uh, some lines, some light, a knife, and an extra radio right next to my Garmin inReach here. So uh, I was able to grab that, throw the antenna on, and um, and talk to everyone out here. So uh, yeah, I'm nervous. This is sailing. This is what makes you better. This is the stress that makes you better, not the stress that makes you old. So wish us luck here. You'll be seeing this after it happens. If you're seeing it, we did all right. <laughs> So we've set the Danforth anchor up on the deck and uh, we're hoping we don't need it. Just behind this one and there was another catamaran there so we, Aubrey had her knife in our pocket like one of those excellent sailors and she was able to cut the mooring lines from the mooring and we're able to motor into the wind to the far corner here in the direction of the wind. We dropped the hook the first time and we were dragging a little bit even though the wind calmed down it was just mud packed with grass and we reset it now got the downforce ready so it was a very exciting period of time Cyril and I are feeling a little bit like death warmed over this morning and we have to go in and get our COVID test to stay in compliance so you have to get a COVID test five days after you get into the country and Cyril's desperately trying to get coffee for me so no one dies but we're really tired. We were up pretty much till 5 a.m. trying to sort things out, so. Green Turtle is part of the Abacos, which was absolutely trashed during Hurricane Dorian, but it seems they're making a pretty good comeback. When we arrived, I had realized that I had forgotten our paperwork for a five-day COVID test, 
so we hopped back on our friend's golf cart and headed back to the boat to grab all of our stuff. Okay, I have a public service announcement in the Bahamas. You should be driving on the left side of the road, um, not the right side of the road, and we were kindly reminded uh, that by someone we almost got into a head-on collision with. And if you're wondering why we're in the golf cart by ourselves now, because I forgot the correct paperwork for our health visas. Because I am still sleeping. Because we went to bed at five o'clock. The rooster was the alarm for us to go to bed. We stayed up and we waited for uh, the storm to pass. Earl was uh, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. I was in and out of a coma. So we have all of our paperwork now and we're headed back. So hopefully this doesn't take us all day. All in all, it took about an hour. We waited about 45 and met with a nurse for about 15. It was pretty painless. What are you doing there? Uh, cleaning some rust off some nuts. So what are we doing? So we are recovering the pieces that we have after our little squall that we had. Do you have a yard sale? Yes, but it actually turned out not so bad after all. I'm missing one of the plates that go over this area over here, which exposes the nuts. And uh, unfortunately that flew away. It's just a little piece of plastic. So I'm just gonna cut one of Aubrey's Tupperwares into a suitable size and cover that up and yeah, I got the motor running yesterday. So what happened was somebody must have done a little bit of work on here and they forgot to put uh, a ceiling gasket on the back here. So the whole bottom half of this is submerged in water. And as you can see where the windlass is, all the salt water runs up around here and in, which kind of like runs straight onto the motor. So I'm just gonna seal it up really good, but I got it running nicely. There was a lot of rust inside and the brushes uh, they've been wearing very differently all the way around because i think some jammed but there were still like three brushes making contact but i think we're gonna have a working windlass by the end of today Smarty pants. Now we got a windlass. Good job. No more Baby hard five. Work After any scary situation, I believe it's always good to sit down and talk about your strengths and your weaknesses, what you did well, and what you could do better next time. Um, where to start? I think the whole thing is about uh, lack of knowing what was going to happen. So preparation is key, my friends. We didn't know that there was a storm coming that was clocked over 70 knots said and done. We've asked around and seen the weather reports and over 70 knots. We were completely knocked down on our side. And uh, it was, I don't know if you can count in the video how many times I want my life vest. I want my freaking life vest. <laughs> and the reason that we couldn't get it was because uh, Cyril will tell you. So the way the lazarets are mounted, they open towards a centerpiece. Throw a little clip up on that. But if I had to open up one of the sides, the wind will either break it off entirely or the wind was pushing down on it so hard that I could not open it. I'm looking at the water going, I don't think I can swim in this. And that was probably my biggest fear because, you know, between the two of us, we can always fix a boat, but you can't fix dead. <laughs> <laughs> so we did hook up with another boat um, while we were out there. And in the footage, you can kind of see us go behind them. We bent our anchor, we lost a stanchion base and our running lights. At that time, we were dragging this mooring block around. You had to so our lines, deal with the lights at the same time. Our lines did not break free. It was not our lines that broke free. We were actually dragging the mooring block with us. And so what I had to do was go forward and cut our own moorings because they were so taut, I couldn't get them off of the cleats. 
So we cut those loose and then once we were free of the mooring, then we had more control over the boat in general. And Searle was smart enough to throw it in reverse where he had a lot of control and was able to keep the bow into wind most of the time. And we came out unscathed. Motion that you did, it was like pivoting on the center point. It was mayhem. So it was pretty <laughs> drastic. Like you would all of a sudden be facing the wind and then all of a sudden facing the complete opposite direction. So yeah, it was, it at was, points we were like reversing into the wind. Yeah, it was really crazy. And I let out Chain, as you guys will probably see me on the deck, wondering like, what the heck is she doing? I'm letting Chain out because he's going forward, but just before I know it, he's going in reverse again. So I'm paying out the chain, and then um, I realize that we're in a muddy spot, and he's like, pull it up. I hauled the entire chain up without a windlass. And, and that's the other thing, too. The main thing that was really a bummer was that Searle was on deck. Um, he had taken apart the entire windlass, like fixing the brushes in it, and so he had like, bolts and pieces and parts and there was just a complete yard sale because he goes hey babe it's like started to rain like very lightly for about a minute or two and he started gathering his things then all of a sudden boom it was just like a wall a sheet of rain and wind and he yells to me get up here and <laughs> me being me i am just stark naked downstairs cooking dinner <laughs> so before i could even realize or respond to him all of our food um, th was thrown over to the other side from dinner. It was a lot. All I wanted was my life vest. So the lesson that I learned was that uh, have those accessible. I, I rethought what accessible was because I thought the vests were accessible in that lazarette because they're on top. You just grab them and go, but they weren't. And so we're going to install hooks on the companionway so that we can have them where we can see them and put our hands on them. This is an amazing lifestyle, although it's not always easy. There are over 39 minutes of uncut and uncensored footage from this video. You can check the link below. A big thank you to all of our patrons for making these videos possible. You are the best. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Sailing the Sloan Star. Okay. Well, cheers to not being dead and feeling more alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>